uh, I think one of the biggest topics going on right now, we'll start in the NFL, and that is the broadcast booths are going to look vastly different next year. Uh, Troy Aikman, it appears, is set to be the ESPN Monday Night Football guy, and the number that was reported, Chris, was $17.5 million a year, which is basically uh, Tony Romo numbers. I mean, this is yeah. kind of insane. Uh, there was talk that he was, or not talk, it was reported that he was in contract negotiations with Amazon. Uh, it looks like Al Michaels is going to be the Amazon Thursday night football guy. He's going to move over from NBC. And now the Fox Sports uh, lead broadcast crew guy, the play-by-play, uh, or not play-by-play, the color analyst, Troy Aikman, is going to be the color analyst for ESPN's Monday Night Football booth And now there's talk that Steve Levy will not be the guy to handle play-by-play for ESPN. It could possibly be Joe Buck. They could end up buying him out of his uh, last year of his contract with Fox. Give me your thoughts here. Is this uh, does this change anything for you? Is it is it surprising? Is it well? It would be the best Monday night booth we've had in a long, long time since Al Michaels was in it. Since I I like the days of Tarico and Kornheiser, Um, most people did not. Uh, so, you know, I, I understand it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a big boost. Getting buck is a big deal because you're not, here's the thing. He's not just a football guy. This guy also does the world series and he has done for a long time. And Fox owns the world series. Now you're about to lose Joe book as the voice of the world series, which will make a lot of baseball fans happy because baseball fans like to bitch about things. But, but I actually think Joe Buck does a pretty good job of calling the game and being pretty down the middle. I agree with you. I agree with you a whole lot. Uh, it, it will change a lot of things just across the board. This is, to me, just a little bit surprising, uh, you know, sticking on the Troy Aikman thing. If they do not get Joe Buck, I, I, I don't know what Troy Aikman would be like without Troy Buck, uh, with, uh, without Joe Buck, excuse me, uh, because I... I don't know that I remember him being with anybody else. Do you remember the last time he was with anybody, like other than Joe? Uh, no, I don't. I don't know who he was with before Joe, or was he ever? I don't. I, don't, I couldn't tell you. I don't remember that long ago. And, and I'll say this: it wasn't, but for several years ago that I started actually paying attention to this. I mean, it's only been like the last five years that I actually care who was calling the game, outside of the fact that John Gruden ruined every Monday Night Football game for me for almost a decade. Um, you know, that was it because. I guess before uh, the red zone became such a big deal for me, I just kind of flipped channels on Sundays, and, and you always had like seven, eight games going at one time. And so I was, you know, I guess I never paid a lot of attention to who was calling those games. I knew Al Michaels' voice because he was Sunday night football. I knew the people who did Monday night football because they were the only games on. Um, Joe and Troy have been doing Thursday night football for a long time because it's the only game on, you know, who they are. And, uh, and that's when I, that's when I paid real close attention to who's actually calling the game. Um, you know, even watching the red zone, you get the same, you know, they're flipping the channel for you and you're hearing different people call the game or, you know. Did we lose Chris? Some people for Comcast. (laughs) I don't, I don't know who those people are because I don't have that. But, uh, <laughs> like, like you know, you're, you're hearing so many different voices for the most part. We know who Romo is. We know who Troy and, 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 and Buck are. That's, that's kind of the list of the guys that I know um, that do games all the time. Like, I know all these other guys. Like, I know who Ian Eagle is. And that, but I don't care if they're calling the game or not. Like, it doesn't move the needle one way or the other. I'm going to watch the game based on the game. Yeah, it, it, with with Tony Romo, I mean, obviously Jim Nance, but Nance also handles uh, the Masters. He handles uh, the NCAA Final Four. I mean, just all the, like his voice is synonymous with a ton of different things. Uh, but Tony Romo has certainly established his name as being uh, a vital one on Sundays. Uh, Troy Aikman and Joe Buck together are certainly a a big big group. Uh, you dig into some of these other things. Uh, how would it? impact the rest of the NFL broadcasting landscape. Richard uh, Deitch uh, said he thinks that Fox, if they end up keeping Joe Buck, is going to go get Greg Olson, who is the network's number two NFL analyst. They'll uh, they'll keep him and just move him up to the main booth. Uh, 
But it's, you know, Sean Payton is out there now. Like, there's a possibility they could bring Sean Payton in. I, I don't know what that's going to look like. I mean, it's, it's certainly strange. It does look like Sean McVay, by the way, is going to stay and coach the Rams at least for one more season. Uh, we shall see. But, you know, now that Amazon is in, you've got a ton of different networks that are trying to hire the right broadcast booth. And we've seen with Monday Night Football, it is important to get the right voices in there uh, because, as you said with Gruden, like it ruined it for you for a long time. And I would dare to well, say look, it's been worse, even, even no, after it's Gruden. Been, it's been, no, it, and it has, as much as I hated Gruden. Um, it has been worse. You, you just, I mean, uh, Jason Witten was, was an absolute catastrophe, just a, just a complete and utter disaster. Everyone hated Booger. I actually like Booger. But they hated Booger because Booger said, like, uh, just the, the, the things that everyone already saw, like the obvious, that's fine. I would rather have somebody pointing out everything, even the obvious to me, than a guy like Gruden who never had a negative thing to say about anybody. You have a team with 37 penalties on a Monday night game and nobody made a mistake and everybody played great because he knew one day he wanted to go back to coaching and he didn't want any film of him trashing a player that he might have to coach. And that always rubbed me the wrong way. You're, that tells me you were being fake. It's not that I hate it, group, okay? It's that he didn't say anything, but you're supposed to be on the game teaching me something. The whole reason they hire a coach and not a comedian is because you're supposed to have knowledge that I don't have. True. Right? If True. you're not going to teach me something new, then I just put somebody up there who's going to be funny, okay? Because that person's going to know how to tell a story, know how to keep an audience, and know how to entertain. Because you're not doing any of those things, and you're just ball washing all these people that you hope to work with again at another point in time. True, true, very true. Uh, as far as Troy, who, on the other hand, man, Troy has gotten. Oh yeah, Troy used to be a whole lot like that. The older he's gotten, and the farther away from the game he's gotten, he's not close to any of these players. He doesn't have a relationship with any of these players anymore. And he's just honest. He has no problem being honest. That's all I want from those guys. I'm not saying you have to just go out there and cut everybody to pieces. But when somebody deserves to be cut to pieces, I need to know you're going to be honest and tell me what you're thinking. Yes. Yes, I agree. Uh, As far as who might pair with Aikman if Joe Buck does not come over, uh, there's a possibility that we could be looking at Chris Fowler moving from the college football booth over to the Monday Night Football booth. So that's something else to pay attention to as we go along. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.